thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about feature flags. And in this session, I'm going to do a little bit of live coding. Uh, but I will start with the theory. This is not going to be uh, about the best implementation of feature flags, but one that works, that is simple to implement, that will hopefully uh, will help you to understand how they work and what they are useful for. So, uh, just a second. So, with a further ado, let me go through the agenda. I will start, as I said, by talking about why we should be worrying about feature flags, why they are useful, why they can be something that might be uh, something that we want to use in our product, uh, in our projects, and then uh, we will talk in, how, uh, we will talk about how to implement them, how to make them a, a part of your project, and there are different options, and I will try to mention like, the most common ones, and when to use them, and how they can be used for different scenarios. I will cover three, but these three cover most of the scenarios that you can have in your application. So then I will do a very brief recap, and you will be free to have another espresso or enjoy yourselves. Uh, so let's start at the beginning, and let's talk about what they are and why, why you should care about them. Uh, in theory, they are a set of constants that will help you hide some content while it is in development. So you can enable or disable features based on the status of this flag. So, well, if this is a constant, it's no good because I cannot enable or disable it. Well, it's a constant for the running time of your application, but it's not a constant, obviously, in your code. So, how do we do that? Well, the thing is that by now, I would guess that most of you have a mindset about features, about creating stuff for your application that does things. And a feature is basically a, a characteristic. It, it is not only some th logic that you add to your product, but also it can be some new animation, some different uh, look and feel that you add into the, your product, anything like that. In general terms, I could say that there are several ways that you can implement features, and all these features uh, are going to be something that disrupts your code, that, that may cause damage in the code that you're writing. So, the thing that you want to do here is, well, you have been told to get a ticket and start with implementing the, the, the feature that you've been told to, or if you are a single developer, you thought that it was a great idea to add this feature to your new product. So, what do you do? Uh, well, basically, you sit down, you create a new branch, and you start coding. Isn't it what we all do? Mm, no. You shouldn't do that. Okay, that was a tricky question. I, I told you I wanted to be awake. So uh, the, the purpose of creating the new branch is obviously to separate the code, but you know that the problem is always not when cre you create the new branch, but when you try to merge it back into the source code. So the branching mechanism that you use is really important here. And I don't know about you, so I'm going to ask about the three of them, but probably if your Git uh, skills are a little bit beyond git init, git add, and git commit, probably you know about git flow. Let me please raise your hands if you uh, are using git flow in one way or another in your products. Okay, I would say at least half, probably a little bit more of the audience is already using git flow. And as you know, it has long-lived branches, which means that uh, for example, main, which is where the main version of your product is uh, based, or de develop, that is where uh, every branch for a feature starts, or even the hotfix or the releases where they get stabilized. All of these are a part of your product. And merging back things from one of these branches to the others is sometimes, at least sometimes, a pain. So they decided to do something different, and they started with GitHub Flow. And probably that was something that came out of many open source projects. And the difference here is, well, I have a main branch, and I'm going to use feature branches. Before I continue with this, some hands up if you're using GitHub Flow. Okay, a couple of people. Uh, GitHub Flow is using a single main branch, and then when you start a feature, you commit to that branch 
the feature branch, and when the feature is ready, you merge it back to the main branch, which is not bad. I mean, like, you don't have all this mess with many features, many branches uh, that are long-lived, but let's be honest here. I mean, even though our product managers believe that a feature is something that can be implemented in 10 minutes, in most cases, that is the case. So sometimes you need more than 10 minutes to implement your feature, and you need several commits to do that, and then uh, you have a problem when you are merging back because sometimes you have several feature branches open. So there is another alternative, and let me ask again. Hands up if you are uh, using trunk-based development. Yeah, a couple more. So trunk-based development is probably the trendiest thing. It comes from the, uh, the catwalk in Paris, and it is a, a, using a single main branch, and you're constantly merging code into that. And probably the first time you hear about that, if this is it, uh, you start thinking these people are crazy because merging back code that is unfinished is something that is quite damaging, uh, quite quite harmful, and, and something that you don't want to have uh, in your code. So the idea here is that obviously you need tests if you want to have this model of branching, and everything is going to be tested and enabled or disabled based on the, the build that you are running. So this is when feature flags made a lot of sense, but as you can see, also in the two other branching models, they, it is relevant. I have already mentioned a few reasons why you don't want to start coding uh, by itself and forget about any feature flags, but let me recap a few of them. So needing more than 10 minutes to finish a feature is one of the reasons, but also it might be the case that you are the, doing some development and you get an immediate urgent thing that you have to solve uh, in order to keep your users uh, from killing you the next time on the street. Okay, So you want to fix that, but you are in the middle of developing something, so you have to switch back to that development and hey, I want to be able to disable all the things that I was creating at that time. Another thing that might happen is that, hey, you have developed this thing, it works, it has even passed the QA or whatever mechanism you use to approve things. But at the end of the day, it, the business has decided that they don't want that feature in your, in your application for one reason or another. So you have to disable it and remove it. And that's something that happens in projects, as you know. And even if it gets accepted and, and if it gets into the project, you're probably going to have some process. Some eventually it will get accepted and included, but you will have to go th through some approval, or you may want to release it for the next big version of your product. So you also want to be able to address different uh, targets for your different audiences that you're using. I mean, like if you're talking to QA, you want to show them whatever is already available but ready. But if you're in the development branch, probably you want to have everything that is going on, even though it is not fully uh, completed. Okay. So that's probably one reason for having uh, all these feature branches that uh, will be included in your code base. And the goal here is to have one single code base that, based on the configuration that you use, will enable or disable features for each of the audiences that you have. How do you implement this? Well, it couldn't be easier. I mean, like, we are developers, so we know how to do an if-else. So uh, notice that here I'm not using an, a, a Swift statement, but rather these are uh, compiler directives. And I'm using a flag that I will show you immediately how to enable that flag. And this flag is what will decide whether this code should be included in the final uh, code that is going to be executed or not. If you have some prior behavior, then you, may, uh, you put it in the else clause, okay? If you don't have any, the else clause won't be there. You will be putting in these feature flags only yes or no, only true or false, only enable or disable. Don't use feature flags to set up parameters for the data. I will show you how to do that instead, but I think it's far more easy to read the, than uh, having the configuration in these feature flags, just having a yes or no and 
being able to read the code, whether that is enabled or disabled, and then the configuration will come afterwards. And well, regarding how to set these flags, let me do a brief recap in what the requirements are and how Xcode implements these requirements. So one of the things that you want to do is to produce different builds for different audiences, as I have already mentioned. And uh, the features are going to be moving forward. So you start by developing something, and it is not ready yet for anybody else. But when it is ready, you enable it only for QA. You don't enable it for your final users yet until it has been tested. If you are a single developer, uh, bear with me because I'm going to talk about you also. But if you are in a bigger team and you have QA uh, and you have beta testing and all this stuff, probably you are going to address these feature flags one after the other. And when the, the previous stage is completed, then you will move forward to the next one. So how does Xcode allow me to build things? Well, you have targets, which are just a collection of files, basically resources and code that uh, help you to produce an executable, a framework, or whatever, a product. You also have build configurations. A build configuration is a set uh, of all the parameters that you want to use in order to compile, to build the application that you're running. And then you have a scheme that is basically a UI helper, like you're saying, when I run this application, what you're going to do is to use this target with this uh, build configuration in order to produce the product that I'm looking for. Or when I'm debugging, you are doing this and that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use that, this uh, parameter, which is Swift Active compa Compilation Conditions, and we're going to set the flags that we want to have there. This would be very similar if you come from the Objective-C world or even from uh, C or C++. It will be similar to the define that you would use in, a, in one of these languages. So this is how it would work. You will have all these stages. You will enable for your alpha, develop, debug, whatever you want to call to the, f the version that you use in order to develop the feature. And it will be moving on, as I was explaining before, from one to the other. You will enable to QA when it is ready, then to external testing if you do beta testing, and then you make it uh, open to the rest of the world. And it is very, very important that you put yourself a reminder and you clean up. Hey, we're developers, we clean up. After having this uh, feature enabled, we remove the old code and we remove all the feature flag that is not needed anymore because that is stable, that belongs to the code, and there's no need to have the feature flag. If you're doing that as a, a single developer, well, I mean, it's just basically a feature flag for the debug and you enable it then for the release. Still works. Simpler, but same story. So what is the way you do the implementation in Xcode? Well, you don't use uh, targets for different flags because you could, you could uh, think of having like different files with uh, different settings for the feature flags, and that would be using different targets. I wouldn't recommend that way. I instead would recommend using build configurations based on XC config files which uh, are going to allow you to set this parameter that I was mentioning before. And then uh, if you want to expose different configuration parameters, you can expose them through a plist, through an info plist, as we have already done many times. And uh, knowing what the configuration is, we will choose one parameter or another. You can also use a, a different bundle identifier if you wish to. And if you do that, please bear in mind that, that you have to uh, somehow figure out what, how you plan to do the transition. Because these are going to be two different bundles, and if you want to move data from one to the other, you have to think that beforehand, OK? So this is where the build configurations belong in the, in the setup of Xcode. You're probably very familiar with this window, and I will go to the actual Xcode in a moment. And we will set them, uh, these exit configs, uh, as the base uh, configuration for each one of the build configurations that we will be using. That's it. I mean, like, it, it, it is as easy as that. And one thing that uh, it would be important and that uh, it would be very useful, and it came out as after a discussion with my colleague Diego, who should be somewhere around here, uh, is, well, let's make this also useful for people who want to do it dynamically. If you have one of these 
picky QA uh, team that wants to enable disable flags at their own will. Well, I mean, like, that's also possible. Usually when you're doing the static ones, you're controlling the process as a developer. You are deciding what is enabled for each of the stages. But if they have to have the capability to uh, enable or disable things at their own will, you can use dynamic ones. They will be able to change the behavior of the application, and they have to be controlled elsewhere. Let's talk about uh, scenarios, and I will do the live coding with the first one. Uh, the most obvious scenario that comes to mind when you're talking about feature flags is when you want to change the logic, how things behave, what some way of calculating some stuff or some new way of doing stuff or something that is done that wasn't done before. But these feature flags can also be used, and it doesn't, uh, the examples I'm going to show are going to be for uh, Swift UI, but it will work exactly the same for UIKit or if you're using AppKit for the Mac. Same thing. The, the thing is that you can choose one way or another, enable feature flags, and even you can mix that with A-B testing if that is your will. If it is a minor change, it will be like a simple if statement in there. But if it is a, a bigger change, if you're changing completely the view that you are traveling to, that you're navigating to, probably what you want to have is to have the navigation conditional. So navigate to one or the other based on that. I will show you code on that in a minute. So. Uh, I have already done a sacrifice to the demo goats. I hope I'm lucky. If I'm not, I will ask your forgiveness. But I'm going to show you how to do this stuff in Xcode. So, okay, this is the application that I have created. Very simple. The source code is available, and I will show you the the URL in a moment. And if I forget, please remind me. Uh, but this is a mood logger. So if you want to remember, uh, if you were happy or sad at that moment in time, and you want to record that, well, this creates a list of moods. And you can add a new one. And because I'm here in Torino and I'm very happy, I create a new one that is happy. That's simple, OK? So the idea here is just to enable one thing. I did this as a proof of concept. And this proof of concept is using uh, like in-memory storage. But I want to do better. I mean, like I know that Realm, uh, that is MongoDB Pro, that is the company they work for, can enable me to sync uh, data from one app to another, and I can do synchronization between my iOS and my Mac, uh, uh, or even my iPad. Well, I can use Realm here for the storage instead of uh, implementing it in-memory, because it's, let's be honest, useless here. So what I'm going to do is to go step by step through the process of creating these feature flags. And the first thing that I'm going to do is come here to the project that I was telling you before. And I, you, as you can see here, this is the default configuration. It comes with two build configurations. One is the debug. I think is that is a bad number, a bad name, sorry. Uh, I would call it develop or alpha or whatever. But well, this is the name of the, that Apple has given to it. And I'm going to create a new one, debug, release, and I'm going to create a third one. This one is going to be QA. I could create more, but just for the sake of simplicity, I will go with QA. So I'm going to be using a, a copy of the debug one, and I'm going to call this one QA. That's it. OK, now that I have created this QA, I can go and create here a, a new a group that I'm going to call configuration. So hopefully, yeah. And inside of this group, uh, I'm going to create three files. Three files that are going to be the XE config files that, if I remember correctly, these are going to be configuration settings files. OK? So by choosing this one, I'm going to go with the name uh, develop for the first one. I'm going to create another one, which is going to be configuration settings file. This is going to be QA. Oh, sorry. And I'm going to create the third one for the release. So this is going to be release. Okay. So, 
Okay, now that I have the three files, I'm going to put different contents in each one of them. So I'm going to go here to the develop one, and in this one, I'm going to use the parameter that I told you with the two flags that I want to have here. Obviously, if I have more, I will add them after that. It's a text file, so you can have many, no worries there, and uh, that is the way you define them, space between one and the other. Notice that there is an underscore for the use realm. I will go to the QA1 and, sorry, not new file, but text here. Oh, just a second. In the case of the QA, I am not enabling use realm yet because I haven't done any development. So it's only the debug configuration. And in the release one, I'm going to go with empty because I don't want any of the feature flags nor the debug capability enabled. Please don't use debug as a feature flag because it's a bad idea. It's meant for other stuff. It, sometimes some libraries use it for some other stuff. So don't use debug as the feature flag. Okay, so now that we have these three, we can come back to the configuration, and here I can expand this for each of the configuration, the build configurations, and set the file, the corresponding file, uh, develop here, re a QA here, and release here. For each one of the, config the build configurations, notice that I'm setting that for the project, not for the target because that is what that parameter is used. And now that I have this uh, thing, I want to emphasize that it's very important that you delete the default values that you have here. Uh, let me, yeah. Yeah. what is that? Oh, here, yeah. So notice that even though I set the values there in, in the Swift compiler custom flags, I set the values in the exit config, but remember that the name of the file was based on configuration file. But you can overwrite this here, so don't overwrite it. Just delete this value and delete this value, and you will have the ones that are included in the exit config files. That is what you need in order to have the feature flags enabled. Okay, so now that I have this set up, I can go to my main file, uh, hopefully I will find it, and here, this is like the app for Swift UI, and I'm going to create a new piece of code here that is going to be in the initializer, and inside of this initializer, I'm going to have a the feature flag. So if I'm, this is something new and there was no pr prior behavior, I will go with uh, if real. If I want to add some prior behavior, as I said before, I will go and add the else clause here. Okay, so now I can go and run uh, the QA, well, let, let's run with the debug that you will see the output here. and. Running the application, because it is in the initializer of the application, it will show right at the beginning the message uh, used in real, okay? Because I'm in the debug configuration, and as you can see here, it's now enabling the code for the debug configuration. Okay, so that will be like first step to get the configuration flags. Quite deceiving because it's very easy. Let's talk about the configuration parameters that we were talking before. So uh, what we're going to do here is to create a new configuration file, and this is going to be a Swift, sorry, Swift file, and I'm going to call this give me a second. Not 
this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me go back a second. So, the next thing that I would like to do is to expose the configuration that I was uh, using. And in order to do that, the first thing that I want to do is to have uh, the, the configuration exposed in the init file. So, I go back to the configuration of the project. In this case, I'm going to choose the target, and in the target, I'm going to add a new parameter to the info list. If you were using Xcode prior to the latest version, to 13, uh, you would have an info list for each of the targets. But as you know, if you're using Swift UI in the latest version, the info list is not created. It is generated uh, when you compile. So here, I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to call this configuration. And if I make a typo, please tell me, because otherwise it won't work. It's going to be a string, and the string that I'm going to have here is going to be con Okay, okay, thank you. Configuration and parenthesis. What I'm doing here is exposing this parameter that is created by the compiler so you can consume it from the source code, okay? So that is it, and now I'm going back to the main application and inside of the init, let me close this so I don't get confused by them. Inside of the init that I created before, I'm going to read this from the InfoPolice dictionary. So I will be knowing in the source code what is the configuration that I have been using to build that application. So I will run this and uh, and in a moment we will be getting the configuration and the string, the string is the name of the configuration that you're using. The one in the build configuration is known in the xcconfig file. It could be the same, but it doesn't have to, okay? So when you compile that one, you will have the configuration debug here, okay? Now I can do better. I can use that uh, on purpose on code in order to create something that is more value. And I can create a new file, which is going to be a Swift file, and I'm going to use here the name configuration for a configuration Swift file, and it's going to be an enum. Uh, I will explain why immediately, okay? And this configuration is going to be uh, added to the target, and I'm going to use it here. So this configuration, oh, sorry. This configuration is going to be using the configuration that we have from the code. So here, oh, um, let me walk this back. So this is going to be a string-based configuration, and what I'm going to have here is the three cases for the three configurations that we are using, the bug, QA, and release. And then we are going to, that's why we made it a string-based, and then we are going to create a static a, a variable a, that is going to be calculated, is computed variable, and the thing that is going to use in order to get the value is to use the string that we were using before, but is going to use that as the raw constructor of the configuration. So by doing that, you can have a, a access to the configuration. Obviously now it's complaining because I didn't import foundation which is required in order to have access to that dictionary, but that is now solved. And by doing that, by having this configuration that when you call it, it will be current, uh, oh, yeah. So I read the string. Now I create the configuration using the creator from the raw value, and I return it. Okay? And that should be it. That is what you need in order to create the configuration. Now, the thing that you can do is to use that value in order to choose the value, the name of the server that you want to uh, return. So, for example, for QA and debug, I will be using the development or the staging server while for production, I will be using the other one. That is much cleaner, and it is inside of the code, rather than in a P list, that would be something that a user can change is in an easier way than this, okay? Okay, so that should be it, and in order to test it, we go back to the application, and I'm going to remove this one, because now I can do that better, and I'm going to use 
the, this uh, line instead of the other one. I'm going to print the configuration and I'm going to print also the name of the server based on that. Uh, I haven't changed that, so it should be printing the debug one. Uh, I have an extra line with uh, this is Swift link that is very nice and is keeping you busy looking at the yellow thing. And as you can see here, uh, this is now printing the configuration and the server name. Okay, much better, isn't it? So now let's go with the dynamic ones. And that should be the last part that I want to show you. Uh, regarding the dynamic ones, what we're going to do is to define this in a way that can be changed, but not while running the code. So let me explain this in, in a moment. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, and that it, it, I'm going to do the same thing here. I mentioned before that I was using an enum, and that I will explain why. The reason why I'm using an enum uh, is because in this case, the other one, it has some cases, but if you create an enum and you add no cases to it, that uh, allows you to avoid instantiating the code for that object. So it's a way to keep constants in, a, in an object inside of Swift. So uh, I'm going to use Swift here, and this is going to be, again, an enum. This one will be caseless. And here, I'm going to create a, a feature flag. Oh, sorry, this is not going to be an enum. This is going to be a protocol. And this protocol is going to be part of the process. And this is when I'm going to define how to code all of the different feature flags for the different settings. So here, I'm going to define a property that is going to be uh, a static variable uh, that is use realm, the name, and it's a read-only one, and it's a Boolean. Pretty clear, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is to create a file for each one of them. So I'm going to create a new Swift file with a caseless enum, and here, I will be using the debug feature flags, and this will be an enum. And what I'm going to use here is define the, the implement. Sorry, let's start by implementing the protocol, the feature flag set protocol that I just defined, and here define the v value of that property, that static property that I mentioned before. So that is enabled for debug. Now I'm going to create a new file also, and this file is going to be also Swift, also enum, and is going to be called, surprisingly, uh, the QA feature flags, okay? And again, I'm going to go with implementing the protocol here and defining the variable here. In this case, it's disabled, okay? And finally, I will use one for the uh, for the release version, and this is going to be the f release feature flags again and caseless enum, and I'm going to add it here, implement the protocol here, and define the property here. That's it, okay? So the way I want to obtain which feature flags I'm going to use, and I know at this time you're thinking, hey, you you told me that this is going to be dynamic, and this is not dynamic, this is static. Yes, wait for a second. So what we're going to do here is create a new thing that is going to be a, f a factory, and I'm going to create this as a, again, a new factory thing. Oh, sorry. that is also going to be an enum and that I'm going to add it to the target. And this factory is going to uh, be using this uh, method that is going to return an object that impl implements the feature flag set protocol. The way it decides which object it will return is based on the configuration. And here, as you see, I'm going to create the switch that will define which object I'm returning. And here, for each of the cases, I will define what I'm returning. So the debug feature flags, the release feature flags, or the QA feature flags. So that's basically how you choose what you're going to do here. And that is what will give us the opportunity to have the configuration that we want. That at the time hasn't solved at all the problem of being dynamic, 
at least not yet. So what we're going to do is to make the QA ones, because these are the picky guys, you remember? Uh, we are going to let them change the value of the uh, feature flags. So uh, let me add some configuration, some printing here in the, in the main fu function. So if feature flag, factory, then get the flags for the current configuration, give me that, and then I will enable or disable that. So that's basically automatic. That's how you can use it. And the way to enable this to be dynamic or, or not is by creating a new file that is going to be uh, at the top level of the project, and it's going to be one of these settings bundles. Probably you've used that for configuring all the stuff in your product. Same story here. You add it to the target, and what you are going to have in this setting is a list that uh, this is quite challenging. I hope that you can read it, but I don't. I cannot make this bigger. So uh, I'm going to create a group here that has a title that is feature flags. I'm going to delete one of the items here and the other one. I'm going to leave the, the toggle one. And for the toggle one, I'm going to change the name that is going to be displayed. So that will be use real, so we understand what it is. And uh, did I? Oh, sorry. I change it in the in the field that is not the right one. Okay, so use real here, real, and here in that is the the value that is exposed. I'm going to use use underscore real. And I'm going to set the default value to no because I don't want the, the QA guys to have this enabled by default. OK, so that's basically it. And I have now this ability to have the, this configuration exposed through the properties or the settings of my application. What do I do next? Well, the th next thing that I would like to do is to have this in a way that I can be used by a uh, by the application. So what I'm going to do here is to have another uh, oh sorry. Let me remove that. Not here. My bad. Just a second. So the thing that I want to do is to have in the QA flags, if I can find that here, I'm going to change the value that was a static before, but now it's going to be based on whatever is set in the configuration. So I'm going to uh, use this clause in order to generate the value of this. And it is complaining because I need to import foundation. But that's it. That's now enabling the use of this feature flag from the configuration that the user can use in order to enable or disable that feature. Now I go back to my main app, and here, if I can remember the sequence correctly, I'm going to have a very simple, uh, yeah, yeah, I know that it looks like a lot of code, but trust me on this, what it, this is doing is just using the settings to enable to register the defaults. You have done this many times, so that, doesn't, that, that is not something that it, you will get as a result of this talk hopefully. Uh, the, the thing here is that you are going to have that code uh, is required so you can use the whatever you said in the in the defaults consumed by the user defaults. That's it. Okay? And we are going to do that at the beginning of the init here. So that should be, oh, sorry. I forgot that I should import foundation, which should be here. And I'm going to consume that function here at the beginning. And that's it. So now, if I go and switch this to QA, and go to QA, and run it, that should be using the default value, which initially is going to be a no. And then I can go to settings, switch that to yes, and then the application will be using that as a yes. So initially, if I didn't make any mistakes, uh, this is going to be not using that. And now I can go to the simulator, go to the application here, switch it. Obviously, I'm not listening to any notification on a value change. So 
in, I need to rerun the application, but you can listen to notifications. It would just take some extra time. So that would be all the thing that you have to do in order to enable this in the code now. Uh, hopefully, now, okay. So this should be now using real dynamic. Yeah, so far so good. So let's go, thank you. Let's go with the recap and that should be it, okay? As I said before, there are three scenarios. I talked about the logic. If you want to do a minor, a minor UI change, you can do that. Pretty trivial, as you can see here. You can use a different modifier uh, using the, the uh, compilation conditionals and the directives. And you can do the same, as I mentioned before, using different navigation for going to one view or another based on the same stuff. So this is not only meant for logic. This also is meant for views if you want to. And regarding testing, that is a topic that I love. And, and I have spoken a few times before about testing. Uh, I, I'm going to say this, but I'm going to make it clear. You don't need them, but you want them, okay? Particularly if you're using uh, the trunk-based development, you want to have tests. That's not something that you can ignore. But don't use tests as an excuse to not use feature flags, okay? So uh, love yourself and your future team and include tests in your application. And if you are including tests, keep in mind that you have to test both scenarios. So you have to test something with the feature flag enabled to do something and with the feature flag disabled to do something else, okay? So not only the uh, previous scenario or the new scenario, but both because you want to know that you're not breaking the behavior. That is all, folks. I'm going to just briefly remind you that you can evolve your code without any disruptions. I think this can be done and I'm doing this and many other teams are doing this. And you can uh, be agile and change your priorities on the fly and keep the changes that you were working on and still uh, add this new stuff to your code and you can power up your development uh, using feature flags. The implementation as I said is trivial using build configurations, exit config and removing the, the defaults and use uh, the, the code in order to choose between the old and the, pre the new implementation. It's good for every scenario, not only logic, but also UI. And I hope that you start using them now if you weren't before. So thank you very, very much. Grazie uh, mille. And I have now, if I may, some time for Q&A. These are some resources. These are, this is my Twitter name. And basically, feel free to ask anything you want. You may and you should, actually.